Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp Square One, where we take a look at the fundamentals of using SketchUp. Today, we're going to dive deeper into inferencing. Specifically, we're going to take a look at inferencing against surfaces, faces, rather than lines, like we did last time, and drawing things other than lines, drawing polygons, drawing arcs, that sort of thing, and how they work along with inferencing. Let's go. Okay, so... Um, Let's start simple. Let's let's go grab a rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead and click and hold on the arrow here for the polygon tool and pick rectangle. All right. So you probably don't notice this, but as soon as you the one of the first things people do with a rectangle is they draw it on the ground. Um, if you look at my cursor right here, you can see that little blue shape floating underneath it. That is a rectangle inferencing to a plane perpendicular to the blue axis. So if I click and draw. I'm drawing a blue rectangle. Sorry, I'm picking up some inferencing here. Let's, let's scoot. Let's go over here. I'm drawing a, a rectangle perpendicular to that blue axis by default. When I draw something on the ground, that's what I'm doing. So it automatically is happening. People use this, this blue inference on rectangles without even noticing it. What I could do here is before I start drawing, I could tap an arrow key. I'm going to hit the left arrow key and see what happens there. Now I'm drawing a rectangle perpendicular to the green axis. Or you could, I guess you could say on the green axis, it is a rectangle that is centered facing the green. I'm not sure. Um, it's constrained to the green plane. If I hit the right arrow, now I'm constrained to the red plane, which is perpendicular to that red axis. So this is kind of cool, because what I could do is I could come in here, I'm gonna hit the up arrow, constrained to blue, and I'm gonna draw a rectangle on the ground. Now I'm going to hit the left axis, constrained to the green, and I'm going to click right here. I'm going to come over, hover just a second on this point right here, and then move up and create an, a rectangle there. Now I'm going to hit the right axis, or the right arrow, excuse me, constrained to red axis, and draw this side in right here. So using these, these uh, inference locks, I can draw a cube in 3D space. So I know, drawing a cube on the ground and push-pulling would have been quicker, but still, it's a good way to practice inferencing. Um, I can also inference planes that already exist too. So if I come over here, I have this cube that I drew and just got rotated. Uh, everything's off axis, nothing here aligns. So if I come in here and I hover over this plane, look how it snaps onto it. So I get the, I get the little dark blue diamond in, indicating that I am on a face. And my face, a little rectangle, turns black and snaps to this face. If I want to lock to it, I can, just like we showed with lines, I can hold down shift and then align to that. But it, obviously, if I release shift, it will let go. If I hit the down arrow, then it will lock to that axis. It will lock to that face, excuse me. Not an axis. Everything is off axis and locks to that face. So that means if I come over here and I draw a rectangle, that rectangle is parallel as a face to this one right here. So same thing, we'll do it again, just hover over here, tap the down arrow, and now I'm drawing another rectangle. There you go, parallel. See how it's tilted in multiple axes? That is how you draw. That works the exact same too for these other tools. Let's, let's switch to circle, and we'll do another one here. I'm gonna hover over this one, tap the down arrow. So, very easy to do. There is only one. When we're with lines, we could tap it twice to get perpendicular. There's not really such a thing as a perpendicular plane, so it's just a toggle on and off. I'm, I'm going to draw uh, parallel to this, this plane or not, so it just toggles on and off. Speaking of perpendicular, though, if I come over here uh, on a, with a line, uh, one of the things that I can do is I can get a perpendicular snap. So if I hover, um, I click on the surface and I hover around until I get this, where the face aligns. Now I'm actually drawing perpendicular to that face. That can only happen if you're drawing a line and uh, you have a face to reference. You can draw perpendicular. So that's going to come straight out perpendicular to that face. Ooh, it's getting messy in here. All right, let's talk about one more command, which is arcs. When I come in to draw an arc, um, it does do the point inferencing, so it'll snap to points. Uh, when I start to 
draw an arc, it will inference faces. So see how this is actually snapping on the face, as opposed to if I come out here, then I'm kind of all over the place. And you'll see that by default, it's turning that magenta color. So a magenta arc is tangent to the first line you're drawing from. So that means, what does that mean? That means if I draw an arc like this, and we'll stick with that magenta, that arc is a smooth transition from this line off into this arc. So that's what tangent is. Tangent is, is as if that arc started on the straight line and that line bent over into the arc. If I draw another arc, I'm going to start here up on this line. So I'm using that. I'm getting the red square, which means I'm on line. Oop, I hit the wrong button. I hit. All right, let's draw another arc. I'm going to start with the red square, which means I'm on line. And here I'm going to pull my, my teal line over so it's on tangent. As soon as I get far enough down this line, though, it's going to snap to magenta and tell me I'm tangent to both ends. So I'm going to go ahead and click there. What that's saying is this line smoothly transitions into this arc, which then smoothly transitions into this line. So a tangent referencing, which is what arc uses, it does use the snap points, we saw that, but then once you start drawing, it's looking for tangent to existing lines. So I can do that. The other thing I can do is when I come to draw a line off of this end right here, I can actually snap to, uh, perpendicular to that end, which will give me, again, a smooth transition. So there's a couple more pieces of inferencing. I know it's a big one, but there's some inferencing off of faces and drawing shapes and arcs using inferencing. Inferencing is so important. It's fundamental to how SketchUp works. So I know this is a lot of concepts to have. Go in, play with it, draw some stuff, watch how inferencing happens. Eventually, if you're conscious of it, inferencing will become second nature and you'll be much quicker and accurate at drawing inside of SketchUp. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos a week, including a square one every single week. And you'll be notified of each and every one of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.